Hey, welcome back. This is Citria, C-E-T-R-I-Y-A. And today we're going to go ahead and walk through the process of making gold or silver metallic objects. I know this was quite a bit of a request and for the most part I tried to make tutorials that kind of fill in the gaps that most people don't get a chance to actually find resources, at least resources that I wish that I had. Um, but over the time I've noticed that people have asked me a couple of requests. So if you personally have a request on your own about a tutorial that you can't seem to find, leave it in the comments below and I'll see if if it's something that I know how to do and I'll share it the best that I can. Anyways, today we're doing a very basics down to the nitty gritty making of metallic gold and silver and let's get right into the process. So already I have the artwork with the flat colors and the line art. May not be the most cleanest line art but I thought I'd do this nice and quick in the jiffy and let's get right into it. So as you can see here, I decided my flat color of gold. It's not too important what your flat color is, but basically something that match with the artwork. And from there, you can decide a darker color. You can go more red for that more luscious gold, a red gold, a green gold, an antique gold, and just test it out until you find a shade that you happen to like. So here I'm just going through and deciding what shade would work, test it out and see if it works for me. So here you can see examples of going for more saturated red gold or going for a more antique gold. Um, sometimes you have a kind of a greenish tint to the gold depending on how old or maybe the style of the day of the process. But again, don't worry too much about that. Just make it look the way you want it to look and if it match with the artwork. Um, from there, what you normally do, just testing out how you would blend out the edges. And again, this is a simple basics type of you know tutorial I don't want you getting too crazy about it but pretty much as I zoom in here pretty much you would draw out your edges for the artwork and then just blend one of the sides to give that soft gradient look you could even layer some colors lower the opacity and blend it out a little bit more I'm purposely using words such as blending versus saying blending tool or, or whatnot mostly because I want you guys to be able to use any sort of digital coloring tool and whichever one that you have been using to soften out your edges that's all you need to do so again I'm going to just redo this process real quick picking out a nice shaded color and here you go I am just demonstrating again go ahead and add in your flat color shading for your dark tones nice soft edges on one end and a hard edge on another end just lay in the shape that you want and for this I'm giving a very glass mirror look if you're not using the blend tool you could also use a nice gradient ombre tool or airbrush tool um, like a soft brush with your uh, brush tool um, but again typically for me I like to use gradients it's nice and quick using the lasso you just make quick shapes and there you go you could keep this hard edge or if you have a remaining hard edge you could blend it out a little bit and already you can kind of sort of see that kind of metallic mirror reflection and again just showing right here just blending it out with the actual blend tool just to, for you to see a sort of difference and then from here you might see like you might not do the best of edges well you can go back in and clean it um, especially if you happen to accidentally blend out the edges that you didn't want to blend out you can go ahead and use a hard brush and make your edges again so here I'm zooming out and you could already see that it already looks like it's metal so let's get into the next process of the shading and that is adding in a little bit more from here I'm just showing you how the different shape of shading gives you that depth of a 3D object. If you're curious about tips for shading and stuff, uh, let me know in the comments. But of course, I'm also going to link to artists that I feel are very good at telling you or teaching you how to actually shade. But this is just to show you how, you know, you can do a flat mirror surface for gold. You could do a diamond shape. You can do a beveled shape. You can do a claw shape and that the principles is pretty much the same. Do you know how to shade? Do you know how to do hard edges? Do you know how to blend? It's pretty much that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly show you the different shapes using the same line art. As you can see, it's pretty much the same line art and I went and give you a different feel of what 
of what of the metal shape how it's shaped as just by shading so now on to the next step and this is just to again add a bit more depth when you know it's shading it's not just one dark color and then you just blend it all over you want to add extra colors um, either darker or sometimes going a little bit more saturated this is where having an object that you can look and observe can give you that sense of understanding oh okay I need to add more colors add more shade and if you want to go a little bit more advanced maybe you're more advanced at shading you can go ahead and start adding reflective colors in this illustration there's a lot of greens and grays so I could have add more green and gray onto the metal object to show reflection but again I am keeping this tutorial pretty beginner friendly just so you understand the concept and the basics of painting and shading and rendering gold and metallic objects so here I'm just blending in some extra colors cleaning out some of the hard edges and just going in and finessing so that way really the most important thing is that when you see it or when a reader see it or someone looks at the illustration they understand it's like oh yeah of course that's metal that's gold so long as it's readable and you get it that's all you need to worry about and of course this is digital so if you make a mistake or you want you change your mind you can do that just as easy don't be afraid to try something new all right so we're getting to the next part of shading and that is highlights Right now, I'm just using my favorite tool, but it's the same principle, just in reverse. Um, with highlights, sometimes I do a harder edge, sometimes I do a softer edge, and you can add in a nice line, and you can see right here, I'm just adding a quick lighter color glow, and from afar, you can tell that, oh, that's a bit metallic. Really, the principle is cr controlling your shapes. So, so this is a flat surface kind of mirror you'll have to excuse me I'm muttering my words but this is a flat surface mirror like type of gold so I'm using just solid you know straight edges and then just the gradient tool or you can use the airbrush tool if you have an airbrush tool with your brush um, you can use the blur brush but just to show you right here right up against the dark versus the light I'm adding in the gradients adding in more contrast and already you can see that this is becoming to look more like a gold shape it again it's a control between your shapes and your shadows and again control over your shading so really from going from like drawing or coloring skin to coloring metal is not that different just the biggest difference is that you have a smoother finish a smoother airbrush finish and a couple of hard edges afterwards there's a technique that I learned from comic books where you basically give it a shape for the highlights and you add an extra highlight with again the airbrush or the gradient um, and the way you make the shape I know I keep repeating shape but shapes important as you can see you just add a nice light glow you could either use overlay blending or just a regular light color whichever works for you guys but again, this is where looking at materials in real life should be helpful. So I'm sure all of you guys have like a belt buckle or a spoon, a fork, um, a knife, um, maybe a nice looking, I don't know, a stapler. You have metallics in your home, um, around you in life. And you can see that when it's super clean, glossy and polished, that it has all these cool reflections. For the more advanced people, if you can go ahead and maybe look at something that's not super gloss polish maybe it's like a matte look or a soft look or a frosted look and from there just you know paint from life observe from life you have to do it even if you're doing a very stylized illustration the point of stylized illustration is that you can understand from afar that oh this is what the material I am trying to you know replicate um, from there it's pretty much done but here I'm just gonna do a couple of extra things you could color the line art you can add extra highlights you can add a nice soft airbrush glow and I'm gonna go ahead and just demonstrate to you here again you can color in the line art how you color line art or change line art if you want to know how to do that let me know I'll create a separate tutorial but for the most part I'm sure if you look it up there's 
plenty of tutorials of changing your line art or if you have ink your art in digital on the computer already you should have a separate layer about that so it's pretty easy so I'm just going in you don't have to change your line art but sometimes maybe that's the effect that you want to give it here I'm just giving it a nice soft low opacity airbrush right on top you know that extra shiny shiny shininess you could kind of do a light airbrush over the whole piece but you want to give it a good pop and usually that extra shine is right where the metal have an edge so you can see I did it on the corners right there and I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same for the rest of the shapes alrighty so I've gone ahead and cleaned out quite a bit of things um, you know it's a give or take kind of thing but here I'm just adding in the final highlights a nice little glow just for fun you don't have to add this but you can see right here that not only do I have different shapes of metals but I even have a more green gold antique so it's not like you just listen to have a set of colors like this is the gold color um, it's all in how you blend it so for now I'm just gonna add something nice and fun I used to have a brush that did this but I'm making it by hand and you're gonna see real quick right here that I'm making a lovely um, shining star type brush there you go so I've made it and I'm just gonna add it right where that extra glow you can put it as much as you want I know it gets a little cheesy but this is pretty much how to make metallics now you're probably asking yourself well where's the silver well just give me a bit right here and I am going to um, color change the silver after I'm done with all these extra glittery sparkles if ever you were wondering how to quickly change your color from one thing to another there's several methods and every program has their own way but for this one I'm basically just using a new layer and changing it to hue or color and right here I got a gray color and right now you're giving I'm giving it a warm type of silver and that's pretty much it um, you can make it green silver blue silver and change out the colors but you see it was the exact same principle and changing it to gray you ended up with these uh, colors and changing with hue saturation messing with it you'll end up with multiple colors so really you could use these techniques for any kind of metallic metal shiny surface so all in all I hope you guys had enjoyed this tutorial sorry if it was a little bit rambly but you know I make these to share and it's kind of how my thought process go so please make sure to I guess give this video a thumbs up or like or comment um so hopefully more people will actually see the video and find it helpful and interesting if there was anything that i could approve or maybe a question that i miss again leave it in the comments below and of course make your request anyways thank you again and i will see you guys in the next video